What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. Where I show you how to save money, make more money, and get out of debt so you can live the life you deserve to live. So we're going to jump into a pretty hot topic today if you didn't already know about it. And even if you do already know about the situation, as I'm sure most of you do, this video is still going to be valuable and informative and entertaining for you. Because I'm not just here to inform you about the situation by itself, I'm also here to specifically give recommendations on what I think we should be doing going forward, especially if this pertains to you. So we're here to talk about two things, the COVID-19 student loan relief, as well as debt cancellation. And before I jump into both of these topics, I just want to preface this video by saying this. Both of these things are 100% set in stone and they absolutely are going to happen. So regardless of your opinion, how you feel about it, whether you love it or you hate it, this is the reality that we're in right now. And it seems like there's no neutral end on this. It, it seems like on this side of the fence, we have people who love it. And on this side of the fence, we have people who hate it, don't agree with it. But um, I just wanted to share that with you before I got into the video. So without further ado, we're going to jump straight into this topic. So we're going to get started with the COVID-19 student loan relief first, which by the way, it was this month of August 2022 when borrowers were supposed to start the repayment of student loans. But with everything going on, the pandemic, the recession that we're in right now, there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of factors. But the bottom line is because of a result of everything that's happening right now, student loan repayments have been extended beyond now through December 31st, 2022. So starting January 2023, that's when you're going to have to start paying those loans back if you owe student loans, of course. And this is for federal student loans, by the way. And by the way, I do think this is the last part and it specifically says the final extension on it. So, I mean, I, I would never recommend getting too comfortable with extensions anyway, but definitely don't get too comfortable now. So if you still owe money after all of this, which a lot of people still will, don't get too comfortable with it. Start thinking and planning ahead now, but I'm going to save more of that for later. Now we're going to jump into the next part of this. So that's the first thing. Now the second thing, probably the reason you clicked on this video in the first place was the debt cancellation. This is something that a lot of us have been wondering throughout the entire time. Like ever since 2020 hit, ever since all the craziness started happening, everyone's been wondering, is student loan debt going to be canceled? And here we go. We got the news that honestly, I was not expecting to hear that this would happen, but it's happened and that's, and that's the reality right now. So as you may know, the Biden-Harris administration recently announced a student debt relief plan, which includes debt cancellation up into a specific number, and it's definitely income-based. I don't want y'all to miss that part. It's income-based. It's going to definitely cap out at a certain income. And again, this is for federal loans. And a question that a lot of people ask about this is this, do I need to do anything to extend my student loan? pause throughout the year and the answer to this is no it's automatically done and you don't have to do a single thing so we're going to get into this by the way i just want to tell you the language is a little vague and there are going to be some questions which are going to definitely have some clarity in the future but as of now, this is what we're working with. Borrowers who earn under $125,000 a year as individuals or under $250,000 a year as a household, you are eligible for this. So if you earn under that amount, you are eligible for up to $10,000 of debt cancellation pertaining to your federal student loans. And this is if you have not received a Pell Grant. And by up to $10,000 of student loan debt cancellation, this is what it means. Let's say you're earning $80,000 a year, which is under the $125,000 for individuals, right? And you owe $20,000 in student loan debt, you get that $10,000 and you have not gotten the Pell Grant, you get $10,000 wiped out of that. So that's $10,000 left. So that's at the max. Like if you have over $10,000 left in your account, it's going to max out at $10,000. Does that make sense? And if you have like $6,000 left in your account, it's not going to do more than the $6,000 because all you owe is $6,000. So that's what it means by the up to $10,000. And it's not going to be like a credit to your account or something they're going to send you in the mail. What's actually going to happen is the number is just going to erase from your account. And so whatever the difference of that is, is going to be left. Now, if that number is zero, cool. But I do think a lot of us are still going to owe some money after that, which anything is better than nothing. So I say that to anyone who owes a lot of money, like well over that $10,000, well over $20,000. We're talking 40, 50, 60 into the six figures. Don't get discouraged. Be happy that some of it is getting wiped out. That's how I would think about it if I was in that situation. Just want to put that motivation out there. 
Now, the other side of that is this. If you earn under that $125,000 as an individual or under that $250,000 as a household, you will be eligible for having $20,000 knocked off of your debt, which is pretty cool. Now, I'll say this. A lot of people don't remember if they got Pell Grants or not, especially if you graduated years ago. So the easiest way to check is just to head over to studentaid.gov, log in, and then just see if you got a Pell Grant or not, and that is how you do it. And of course, if you forgot your username or password, just fill in the information, hit the forgot password, and then they'll send you an email. You'll be on your way to figuring out if you got a Pell Grant or not. So again, the up to $20,000 factor still does apply to this. So if you owe $10,000 and this specific situation pertains to you, then it's only going to knock off $10,000. It's not going to do the full $20,000. Now, if you owe $40,000 or even $20,000 flat, yeah, it'll knock the $20,000 flat to zero. It'll knock the $40,000 to $20,000. That's how it is. So as you can see, it's not that difficult to understand, but there are still a few gray areas and still a few questions and some things that people are pondering on. They're wondering if this is going to affect how this is going to affect the economy, you know, how this is going to affect them and their family in the future. Is this going to affect their taxes and stuff like that? But I'm not going to get into any of that in this video. If you want me to make a separate video about it, just let me know in the comments. But for now, I'm just sticking to this. Now, you might be asking, is there anything specific that I need to do? But it looks like most people are going to get this automatically. But it specifically says nearly 8 million borrowers may be eligible to receive relief automatically because relevant income data is already available to the U.S. Department of Education. So chances are your information is already on file and they already know. But if for some reason they don't have your information, they're going to launch an app so they can get your information, which is going to be available early October. So not too long from now. Now, if you heard all that and you're still not too sure if the Department of Education has your income information, that's perfectly fine. Because fortunately, they made it very easy for all of us. The Department of Education has a subscription page that you can sign up for if you want to know when that app launches and you can put your information in there that way. And whether the Department of Education has your information or not, it would be good to have for a peace of mind. So I linked all that in the description so you can check it out there. It's the article and it's going to be hyperlinked and all that good stuff. Now, if you do end up going through with that and you sign up for the application and you fill out your information out down the road early October, like I just said, it says that once they get your information, you can expect to see your student loan relief between four to six weeks, which is not really a bad turnaround at all. So with that said, any borrower who this applies to needs to apply by November 15th. And that's if you want relief before the end of the year, December 31st. But all of this is in the article I'm going to link in the description, so I'm not going to spend all this video just going over that. I do have some other things I want to share with you. So I also saw something interesting, but the article also says, in addition, borrowers who are employed by nonprofits, the military, or federal, state, tribal, or local government may be eligible to have all of their student loans forgiven through the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. So if you want to read up on that and learn more information about that, if that sounds like you, you can also click on this link that I have in the description. You can learn more about it and see if it applies to you. Same thing for anyone who it pertains to $20,000. If you know you're about to be debt free, period, you need to start thinking different to make sure you don't get back into a similar debt. So I just want to share some thoughts with you real quick on how I think this should be approached in the future. I'm not going to give you my opinion on the state of the economy and what all this means and blah, blah, blah. Again, that's for another video. I'm just telling you right now, if any of this pertains to you, and even if it doesn't, you should think differently about the situation. So check this out. If you're someone who owes student loans and you're looking at this like, man, even if I got the minimum amount, I'm going to be debt free by the end of this. By the end of this year, I'm going to be debt free. If that's you, I encourage you to think differently about money because I don't know how your savings are set up. All I know is you had some debt that you still owe. And if that is the case and the debt just magically goes away one day, think about what you're going to do with that money that would have automatically been going towards your debt, say, at the end of the year. Really, really think about that. Like, say you're 25 years old, you've been paying down your debt for a few years now, but you know. You, you put a little dent in it, but there's still a decent amount left and it's going to take you a while to pay that off. And this is just an example. Let's say, you know, you just got out of college, you're 25, 26 years old. You've been paying your debt for a few years now. You know, you didn't just just get out of college, but you've been out of college for maybe two or three years. And, you know, you still owe some left. Right. And, you know, you were paying about five hundred dollars a month on your student loans before all this craziness happened and everything got paused. I want you to think about. Okay, if my student debt just disappears 
at the end of the year. What am I gonna do with this $500? My recommendation on this channel, I recommend saving it. If So if your savings aren't up to par and where you want them to be, I recommend making it automatic. The same way you made it automatic to your student loan debt on nailnet.com to pay off your student loan debt. Now that that doesn't exist anymore, I would make it $500 to myself at the beginning of every single month. Cause that was money that was gonna leave your account anyway. So you might as well just keep making it go to somewhere productive. If it's not going toward debt, okay, cool, it's going to savings now. And I, I would recommend doing that, you know, for a long time until you get your savings where you want them to be. Or even if your savings are solid, I would recommend going to the next step, taking it a little further, putting it in investments. And this ain't no investment video, so I'm not gonna get into all that stuff, but I do have other videos about investing in the stock market, safe investments, good investment, they give you good returns, and I also have a whole book about all of personal finances. It's a quick read, it's 170 pages, but there's a whole chapter dedicated to investing, and just reading that chapter alone can make you millions of dollars. And that's no exaggeration. But anyway, these are just recommendations. I want you guys to feel free to do whatever you want to do, but I'm just telling you, these are ways to make yourself wealthier, and that's the whole point I want people to focus on because it seems like everyone's dream is to get out of debt, which it's a good thing to get out of debt and not have to worry about that, but I feel that so many of us are in a rush to get out of debt to our detriment. And that's actually another topic I wrote about in my book. But that's what I would say. I would say either put it in your savings or investments, or if you have other forms of debt that are more urgent, like say credit card debt, for example, I would throw that money at that so fast until it's gone. And then I would keep the automations going because now I would have been so used to not having that 500 anyway. It's going towards something productive that's going to make me a richer man. You get what I'm saying? And I want y'all to be richer as well. And if you're someone who knows that even if you got the max amount, it still wouldn't knock out all of your debt, start thinking about how much is going to be left over. And whatever's left, you just make up a plan to pay it off. But I want you to do so in an intelligent way. Like student loan debt, I always say this and I will not back off of this at all. I don't care what anybody says. Student loan debt is not a complete rush to pay off. It's important to pay off, yes. But it's not so important that you should throw every single dollar at it. I always say this in my videos. You know, when I first graduated from college, I was throwing so much money at my debt. I'm talking thousands at a time at my debt because I had been saving money, right? And then I was also throwing a portion of my savings into my debt payments in addition to extra money I found by not going out to eat and stuff of that nature. And I was just throwing so much money. I was working overtime at work. It was crazy. But then... I just got this scary thought in my head and it never left. Like I still think about this to this day. What if I put so much money toward my debt and my debt goes down to zero, but then something crazy happens and my income streams get cut off? Then I'm not gonna have anything to show for it. You get what I'm saying? So think about it that way. Think about how can I pay this off incrementally? And if you have a goal of two years or three years, that's fine. Just don't try to do it in no three to six months unless it's like a small amount of money that you can definitely afford to get rid of. You get what I'm saying? And the reason I say it's not super urgent to pay off, student loan debt interest rates are low. They're typically lower than 5%. If you have that in credit card debt, worry about the credit card debt. Don't worry, hey, pay, the, pay this off, pay the minimum payment or whatever until you get all this other debt paid off. Pay your other debt off first, your you know, your credit card debt and stuff like that. Once that gets to zero, that's that interest rate, that interest rate right there, that's gonna eat you alive because it's typically more than triple, more than triple that of student loan debt. So I just wanna leave that thought with you. And you know, one more thing I wanna throw at you. If you're someone who wants to build wealth, if you have a business idea, maybe you could save up that $500 a month, the $500 or however much you were paying, you know, your automatic payment for your student loans, having that automated to yourself, you could take a portion of that and invest in your first business venture, an LLC, something of that nature, a website or something. You know what I'm, you know, you get what I'm saying? You could put some of that money toward a website domain, something that's going to increase your income, a side hustle, a side business. If you don't want to do either one of those investments and savings, but either way, I want to encourage you to think about putting that money into something that's going to make you wealthier in the end. I just don't want us to get caught into the celebration of, oh, I'm going to be debt free. Oh, I'm going to you know, party. And I can see it all now. People throwing legit parties, spending crazy money on, you know what I'm saying, on celebrating being debt free. If you want to celebrate, celebrate. But be smart about how you celebrate.
That's all I'm going to say. Think about how this can make you more money in the future and think about how you can use this to your advantage. And that is all I have for this video. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative and entertaining. And I just wanted to give my take on the whole mindset behind debt and things of that nature. It's more than just a goal. And that's not the end goal, by the way. That's just a part of becoming financially free. Once you get out of debt and once you build wealth and get other streams of incomes and things of that nature and you have passive income, there's a whole different side after that. And if you're about to get out of debt, strategize on ways that you won't ever have to go back into debt, especially debt that's gonna take you forever to pay off. But anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.